Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm getting it <coughs> centered on the screen as best I can. When I push the button here, you'll hear a click and then a second later, you'll hear a second click. First click will be the mirror slopping up out of the way. Then there'll be a pause to give the camera a chance to stop vibrating and then the shutter will go off. So here we go. Okay, so that's that one. And I'm just going to go through the entire book like this. And the reason for the uh, sheet of glass is to help hold the pages flat because they're going to have a tendency to want to curl up. Now, I notice I got a got a bit of a scratch right there, so we're going to try and avoid that. Okay. And I want the page number on the bottom to be in it. And we'll try and get it square here. Get absolutely everything in. <clears throat> and here we go. And so it's going to go. Now, maybe I should mention here that I am using every trick in my camera bag that I can think of to uh, ensure that this is as sharp as possible so that uh, when we enlarge a certain area and it will be uh, well as sharp as possible. Um, I've got the uh, I'm using my 50 millimeter prime lens instead of the zoom lens because I think it's a tiny tiny bit sharper. Uh, I've got the uh, the uh, f-stop at 5.6 because this lens is pretty much at its sharpest at 5.6 uh, maybe uh, f4 4.5 but 5.6 is going to be about the same very very low ISO here um, uh, I've, I've overexposed the uh, I'm overexposing it by one one stop here I think one stop let me check Oh, wrong button. Oh, point almost a full stop, uh, and that way uh, the pictures won't look what you what I was referring to uh, yesterday as muddy. Um, anyway, let's do one more here. Try and get it square. I think I'm probably a lot better photographer than I am a model builder. Photography's been a hobby since I was a teenager. A serious hobby, very serious hobby. Okay. Have I missed anything? Have I missed a page? I think I missed a page. Now I've got to go check. I shouldn't talk and do this at the same time. Don't worry, I'll get it. Uh, did I mention that uh, another reason why I want to use this lens instead of my zoom lens? Uh, my zoom lens only opens up to f4. This will open up to f1.4. It's a much brighter lens and I can pinpoint focus a lot better at f1.4 than I can f4. Then, uh, then I know that when I close it down to 5.6, I'm going to be just dead on. Okay, I thought you'd like to see the last one. Step 77. I've got the monitor angled so that you can see it better than I can, but I think I got it pretty close there. Got everything in. Oh, 78. See, I'm not always right. Alright, 
78. I'll be bringing these up in Photoshop later and adjusting anything that might look like it might be wrong, like trim the uh, black off the edges and so on. Okay, that was it. Okay, I've got them all and I was just quickly going through them to make sure I didn't miss any and I was basically just watching the numbers. And I get up to number 24 and I noticed that number 24 here, it kind of looked a little bit fuzzy. Uh, at least the, the number 24. And so then I'm looking at the rest of it and it appears to be uh, double lines almost. So I enlarge it to, you know, to see what's going on. Yeah, sure enough, we got uh, double lines going on there. And I thought, oh my goodness, how did I manage to move the camera? So uh, I went back and checked the manual. Well, there's good news and bad news. The good news is I did not move the camera. The bad news is it's printed that way and there's nothing we can do about it. However, the information is clear enough that we can figure it out, you know. And, you know, it's pretty good. I, I like it perfect, though. <laughs> One more thing here. While I was sitting here, probably around step 35, I noticed a little delivery vehicle pull up the uh, front there, and uh, the power adapter came for the light that's not working. Yeah, it's kind of too bad. If it wasn't here a couple hours ago. I could have could have used it. Well, mind you, we had lots of light. I'm going to be quickly running through these photos that I just took here. I know that one of the viewers wants to see them. At least he wants to see the paint chart. Now, if you see something in your, you know, that catches your eye and you want to look at it longer, press the space bar. As soon as you press your space bar, the video should stop. At least it does on my computer. Should on yours as well. Now, if you're watching this on your cell phone, well, you're kind of out of luck. Uh, but thanks for watching anyway. However, here we go. Now, if you will remember, last time I got a package like this, I was complaining about the fact that the perforations for ripping by hand didn't line up. But this one is a little better. It's maybe only off by about an eighth of an inch, so I should be able to do this. this there we go. For a minute there, I thought I had a free credit card. My goodness. We should be able to get one of these to fit in the back of my light. Are they all the same? No, I don't think so. Anyway. Uh, 
All right, where's the output on this thing here? There we go. Get the light just right. Okay, DC 12 volts at 5 amps. All right, that's uh, more than enough to handle my lights, which are rated at 12 volts. Um, usually I would test something like this, but I'm not going to bother. And I do believe that the existing cord that I have will probably fit in there already. It's the same type. Anyway, just going to go ahead and hook it up now. You know what? These are all the same. Okay. You know what this thing's meant for? I think it's designed for uh, one of those patio lights. You plug this end into your power supply, and then you plug your patio lights into this end. Yeah, well, I don't care. As long as it works in my floodlight, that's good enough. Well, it does work. I just tried it. And uh, I'll probably hang on to this. You know, there's a couple of things that really boggle my mind. First of all, why do I keep hanging on to stuff like this? I've got boxes down in my workshop. I've got a whole bunch of this kind of junk. And I've got a, a drawer full of adapters, but not this particular one. Anyway, it's not getting hot or anything. It's still plugged in on the other end. Um, second thing that boggles my mind is, how can they make this in China and ship it to me, to my door in Winnipeg, for uh, $20 and change. Yeah, that's sort of mind-boggling. Okay, I admit it. The change was 99 cents. Let's call it $21. My mind is still boggled. Now, the other day I was talking about when I first saw this right here. You know, see the way it sort of bulges out a tiny bit? And I thought this was, you know, flashing that had gone wrong. But it turns out... If I turn this over, you'll be able to see that that is actually the way it is supposed to be shaped here. Okay, so I don't need to worry about that. Now eventually this place, this uh, hull is going to get to the place where I won't be able to handle it like that without marking it because it will be painted and so on. Now, uh, let's uh, open our book up here to step one. Okay, in step one we have to glue these, these uh, uh, cross members in. Now they go like here, and here, and here, and so on, obviously. Uh, however, I was thinking about that, and I was, I was thinking, what if, after I glue them in, the deck does not want to fit properly? Uh, well, um, I think the thing I should do is fi find the, the deck pieces, and just lay these, these uh, cross members in place, and then make sure that the deck is going to fit because what if after I've, I've got it glued I've got everything glued into place I find that the the hull is too squeezed in and the deck won't fit uh, yeah then what do I do uh, I'll be busy trying to you know break it apart um, so I think I better do that now there is another thing that has to be done and maybe we should be doing that first Man, this thing is long. Okay, uh, I've got these things here and here and here. I'm not too worried about this one and this one. Uh, but uh, this one would definitely be seen, and this one might be. Um, yeah, there's one, one away down here at the end. Okay, maybe I should uh, file those around it here and maybe get rid of this seam while I'm at it. I'm just going to go ahead and do that off camera. It seems that lately, whenever I say I'm going to do this off camera, I end up changing my mind. And I 
I think you probably realize I'm putting this tape on here so that when I'm filing I don't accidentally scrape the bottom of the hull where I don't want to scrape it. At least that's the plan. Even right here where it's basically flat it is slightly rounded. Very slightly. This one here, it's not too, uh, it's not protruding very much, so I have to be careful not to go too, down too much. Okay, one more to go here. Yeah, that should help if I'm careful. Now, a moment ago I had the thought, what if there's something along the gunnel here that might be, you know, sticking up that I might be accidentally breaking off, but, uh, you know, checking, there isn't. So, so whenever I turn it over, it's going to be riding on right there and probably right here. Anyway, just want to check and make sure. Don't want to be having to glue stuff back on or worse yet trying to remanufacture something out of sprue goo. I realize that this is overkill. I will uh, transfer to my other file later and then eventually the sanding sticks. Um, we'll just try it on the really coarse side first. I just won't push down too hard here. Well, here we go. Every once in a while I'll get a comment from a viewer who says he really appreciates being able to see something done in real time. Well, that viewer is going to be pleased today because I'm not going to be cutting anything out. Now if you're one of those viewers who doesn't like this sort of thing, well, you know how to skip ahead. Took the tape off there. Gotta be careful. off on the other side. Give it a couple more passes and then I better transfer to something else here. Now I've re-angled everything a little bit here. That's not serious. That's not serious. Now where's my little file? There we go. All right.
you know, I should be wearing my other glasses so I can look a little closer here. Okay, I think we're just about at the place where I can start using a, maybe the uh, medium sanding stick. A little bit right there. Now, I don't want this to be too good because then it's going to show up all the rest of the ship. I'm not pressing down very hard here, I'm just going lightly. I do believe I've got about as good as I can get it with the file. Okay, this one says medium. That is if you can read upside down. Now you can still see where that was, but I can't really feel it. Okay, fine. Got a few scratches in here. I know that something like that will show up even after it's painted. So I'm going to have to try and go down past that somehow. If I could find something that was halfway between medium and medium and fine here. I think this fine is maybe too fine. Well, I'm just going to work away at it for a while and we'll take a close look in a minute. I think I've got it about as good as I can get it here. Well, that's not true. I could probably take it down a little bit more, more right there. But you know what? I can't feel that. I'm just going to leave it. Now, the, the rest of the protrusions, or sprue uh, nubs, or whatever you call them, uh, they're going to uh, be a little harder because the area is flat. This is actually the easy one. 
And I, I, will, I won't show you the hard ones. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Now I just edited out the last few scenes there and a couple of things really impressed me and, and if you want to call it impressed and one of them was how long this video is getting and also how late in the afternoon it is here already so I'm going to have to cut this off but you know I was just wondering I have never used this before. You know I'm noticing it's not, it's not running true. Yeah it's kind of like uh, not straighten the chuck and yet I did adjust it a few times you know like it so you know I think it's this Dremel chuck uh, anyway so I'm just wondering about using something like this to take it down uh, whether it would work or not uh, I have to be careful I don't go right through and out the other side which I don't think I would do if I did go too low it would be easy to fill it but I'm thinking it might be something like this it might be a little easier but you know what uh, that's going to have to be tomorrow so uh, thanks for watching and all being well we'll see you tomorrow <laughs>